Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning Voce Venezolano number two. Now this roughly translates to Venezuelan waltz, and if I remember correct, there's actually four of these pieces, and of course this is number two, but I think the most popular are the first three, and I'd highly encourage you to check them out. They're all by Antonio Loro, and they're just incredible pieces. But if I had to pick my favorites, it would definitely be this one, number two, but also number three, which is just simply divine. It's just absolutely beautiful. So definitely check them out, tons of versions on YouTube. But let's talk a little bit about this arrangement. Now, traditionally, this is a song that's played on a solo guitar. And I thought it'd be cool to take it and turn it into a duet. And I wanted to do a duet for this one for a couple of reasons. Well, first off, duets are fun, but as you saw in the performance, this is a pretty challenging piece. It's quite fast and it jumps up and down the neck constantly. It's just constant movement up and down the neck. So I thought it'd be cool to turn it into a single note melody so we can focus on some of that tough jumps and navigating the entire fretboard. But I also thought it'd be kind of cool to do a duet that used two different ukes, and that's what's really unique about this arrangement. It's that the melody is played on low G ukulele, whereas the rhythm is played on baritone. So it's kind of the best of both worlds if you own both ukes. You can learn this one on low G and then grab the baritone to play the rhythm part, which the rhythm part is awesome. It's got some really cool movement as well and just a real cool sounding piece altogether. But let's go ahead and talk about how this lesson is going to work. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the entire melody for low G ukulele. So grab the low G for this video. And if you want to watch the part two lesson, that's going to teach you the baritone part. So you will learn the rhythm. You can do so by clicking this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for the song. I'll put the spelling up here. And also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off and keep for your records, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's kick into this lesson. So the first thing is that we have to recognize we're playing in a waltz. So a waltz means we're playing in three, four. So we've got three beats per measure. One, two, three, next measure. One, two, three, one, two, three, and so forth. So that's the first thing. We're not playing in common time with four beats per measure. We're playing in three, four. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is my right hand approach for picking. Now, as this is a quickly paced tempo piece, I'm going to be using what I find to be the most efficient way to quickly pick single note melody lines. And that's to use piccato picking. Piccato picking is just a fancy terminology that means alternate picking. And alternate picking means that we're gonna be using these two fingers, but here's the thing, you're going to lead with the middle finger. So if you take the first string, just play it as an open string. I'm gonna do this first off. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna rest it on string four. It's kind of like an anchor. Then I'm gonna start my piccato picking going second finger, first finger, and that's it. So try, if you're new to it, try to put it in like a really simple time frame, like eighth note. One and two and three and one and two and three and. So you're just alternating middle index, middle index. Keep it nice and steady. You don't have to play super fast. You're just getting used to piccato picking. Now, if you're brand new to it, I would encourage you to check out our lesson called La Gitanita. I'll put the spelling up uh, somewhere here, but I'll link it in the description box below. It's a flamenco tune that goes a lot more in depth in piccato picking technique and gives you a little exercise to work on. And it's also a really fun piece to play. Plus it teaches you a really cool rascado strum, which is a four finger barrel roll strum. So you get to learn two techniques in one tune. Anyways, Going back to this one, so that's essentially what I'm doing for my right hand. I'm gonna just be doing piccato picking throughout the entire thing, and I'm pretty much gonna be always resting on string four. There's a couple times we're gonna play a note on string four, so you gotta, gotta lift up. 
and uh, move your thumb out of place. Or actually, if you want, when you get to string four, you could kind of turn this piccato picking into a hybrid picking technique. So for example, you could be piccato picking across string one, two, and three, but when you get to string four, because there's only a few notes on string four in this piece, you can just hit, do a basic down pluck with a thumb. So that's another thing you could do. So that's my suggestion. Uh, try it. If you want to use traditional finger picking or your own method, go for it. It's up to you. But this is the most efficient way for me because if you think about it, if you were to play a, a single note melody line on the first string and you use one finger, you got to work twice as hard to do this when you can go like that instead. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start with the first part of this tune. And I do want to state this off the bat. If you know the original song, I have, in essence, compressed or cut off a little bit of the original form. Um, what I've done is I'll put the form up here. Uh, I'm going to go through the A melody twice, and then I'm going to play the B melody and then back to the A melody. So in essence, I'm kind of treating it like a standard ABA form or AABA form. Uh, the piece does, the original piece is intended to go back <laughs> into the uh, B melody and then back to the A melody. So if you want to learn to play it exactly as it was written, I'll put all that information in the description box below. Um, if you're watching this on the rockclass101.com site, it'll be in the helpful tips above. All right, let's kick into it now. So. The first thing we have is a little pickup measure, and it sounds like this. The key thing you want to listen to is that we're starting out on the end of one, and I'll put the little tablature up there so you can see. So anytime you're counting in for a pickup measure, you just want to give yourself a little bit of time to actually come in. So what I'd recommend is counting maybe four bars, like one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, and two, and three, and one, two, three, right? So you just give yourself a little bit of time to fill the beat or fill the tempo that you're playing at, okay? So that's a really helpful tip, especially if you're playing this with a duet, you know, you need time for you to jump in. You don't want to go and just come in, come in, let's start, right? So give yourself a little bit of time by counting a few bars to get accustomed to the tempo that you want to play it at. But I'm going to go ahead and play again just the little uh, pickup measure and then we'll break it down and learn it. Sounds like this. Okay, so let's break down those series of notes. Okay, so we already know that we're not playing on the first beat. We want to start on the end of one, and it's gonna be the open second string. From there, we're going to use our index finger to play the second fret, same string, then to the fourth fret with the ring. After that, we play the open A string to the second fret. Okay, so the box that I'm playing out of for this first part, and it's kind of important as we jump into the next couple measures. As we jump into the next couple measures, you're gonna see that you're pretty much playing out of this second position. You can see what I'm doing with my fingers right here. Each finger has its own fret. So if I was to just, let's clean that up a little bit. There we go. So if I was to cycle through all four strings, all four frets. As I played just straight down the neck, you saw that each finger got its own fret. So that's all playing in a position is. I like to call it playing in a box, but most folks will just call this position two. So fret two, three, four, five. Essentially, you're assigning a finger for each fret across all four strings. And as I play through this first part, and let me get rid of that tab up there. you can see that I kept that assigned finger no matter if I was playing on the first string or the second string or whatever. It just makes it really, really efficient. It's the same way we talked about using piccato picking to make our right hand efficient. We can make our left hand efficient as well by playing in these positions. So keep that in mind. I see a lot of times beginner students, and this is not a beginner piece, but even intermediate students will do something where they kind of do these awkward stretches and stuff, and you don't really have to do any of that, right? We can kind of take a second back and think about what's the most efficient way to tackle this. So try and stay in that box as we work through it. 
But putting back up this little pickup bar, so we have on the second string, O, two, four, on the first string, open second. Now you can look at the rhythm, very easy to spot everything, it's just straight up eighth notes. Key is starting on end of one. So we have one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and, okay? But let's slow it down a little bit and let's try it together. So we have, let's go one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and, okay? So it's a pretty simple uh, first part. Now I did demo and play into the next note. And this next note is actually the first bar of the piece. So we're going to end on the fifth fret of string one with the pinky. So keep that note in mind, and let's actually backtrack. Let's try the little pickup with this last note, because it sounds like a complete phrase to end on that five. It sounds a little abrupt if we go, <laughs> right? It's a little cut short. So let's add that fifth fret with the pinky on the A string, and let's give that a shot. So nice and slow. One and two and three and one. Nice. Okay, so this first note, it's going to be a dotted quarter, so that means we need to hold it for a beat and a half. Now, anytime you're holding for a beat and a half, I would kind of, I would simplify your count. So instead of going one and two and, right, and coming on on the end of two, maybe you can count it, for example, as one, two, and three, and, so you can kind of simplify the count. Count a quarter note, one, two, and three, and, instead of one and two and three and, right? So you don't have to count all eighth notes. You can simplify the count. And I think that just helps, helps it flow in my mind a little bit. So I just wanna point that out. So with this measure, it's very simple. It's exactly what I just played. So we have five, three, two, three. And you can actually put a little bit of uh, this little uh, pull off technique as well. So. Once you play that fifth fret, we're just gonna alternate between third, second, third. Still stay in that box we talked about, all on the first string. But for example, you can go three, pull off, and then back to third, okay? So you have five, two, and three, and. So you wanna count that one out. One, two, and three, and. So you can add the little pull off on that first hit, or if you want, you can pluck every note. It's up to you. This stuff is really uh, subjective to how you want to interpret and play it, okay? So let's see if we can try that measure together. Not super hard. So we have one and two and three and... So here we go. One, two, three. One, two, and three and... Nice. Now if we look at the next measure, it's gonna sound like this. So the first thing you're going to notice is it is all eighth notes. So we have pull off for the first hit. So still staying in the box, start with the second fret of the first string, go ahead and pull off two to open. And then with the ring, we're going to the fourth fret of string two, play that note, follow it up by open first, open second, open first. So we have pull off four, oh, oh, oh. So not too, too hard, right? Let's see if we can do that. Keep it nice and steady with the eighth notes. Two and three and one and two and three and. Nice. Now, as you practice this piece, you know, you always wanna learn stuff bar by bar, but again, you, I think you're starting to see or hear that it sounds a little abrupt to just play one measure at a time. If I cycle back from the beginning, Right, we're starting to hear more music. We're starting to hear the context of the actual composition. So I would take little sections of this as you practice it, All right? Don't do just one bar at a time. Just try and take like, for example, these first three bars. If we try to play them together, let's see how that comes out. So let's see at a slower speed. One and two and three and one. Right? So you're starting to really grasp the musical context, right, when you connect them. 
So try a couple bars at a time, three bars at a time, right, over just doing one at a time. But as we continue on, let's take a look at the next measure, measure three. And if I put up the tab right there, you're going to notice that it's got that same rhythm that that first measure had. So you have dotted quarter following up with eighth notes to end it. Now here's the thing is that our position is going to shift. So we're going to be moving down to position one, or as I like to call it, box one. So instead of being here from two, three, four, five, now we're on one, two, three, four. Okay, so same thing. Right, so anytime you're playing on the first or the second fret or the third fret, you know which finger is assigned across all four strings. Let me play the third measure into the fourth measure, and you can see and you can hear that. So we have one, two, three. Okay, so let's break down what's happening in our third measure. So we're going to start with the third fret of string two, play that note with the ring. Then we hold it out for a dotted quarter. So again, I like to count one, two, and. So we're playing on the end of two. It's going to be the index on the first fret, same string. Pull off to the open, and then end on the second fret of string three. So we have one, two, and three, and. Okay, let's try that together. So we have one, two, three. One, two, and three, and... Nice. As we look at measure four, we're going to start with a hammer-on, so first to second on the third string. Then on string two, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do pull-off, so one to open. So you got to drop down with the index. Okay? To finish it up, take the ring, put it on three on string three, and then open E. So together, Hammer, pull off, three, open. So let's give that one a shot. All eighths, two and three and. Nice. And again, it sounds really abrupt and a little bit like uh, lacking context. So if we backtrack, let's try three into four. One, two, three. Okay. Another thing you can do with this music too is you can also sing it. It's a very catchy melody. Bum, da, 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 da. Right? If you can sing it, you can play it. Now, let's take a second just to backtrack all the way to the beginning. And I'll cycle through everything, measure one through four plus the pickup. And that'll give you a good context of this first little half of the A melody. It sounds like this. Okay, let's see if we can try that together, but slower. So maybe we'll go one, two, three, one, ba da 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 da. That sounds cool. One, two, three, one. Nice. Now here's the thing we got our first big jump, right? Before, we just went second to five, position two to one to four. We didn't really have much movement in our left hand, but now we've got a big jump up the neck. So we're going to be switching all the way up to the seventh position. So here's the thing, anytime you have big jumps, you wanna use the dots on the fretboard as your guide. So the thing with the uke is that it's not all uniform. The manufacturers don't make it uniform, which is, Kind of is, is not cool in a way, but it is what it is. Here's the thing. Some ukes start with the first dot on the third fret. Some start with it on the fifth fret. So you got to take a look at what you got. Mine starts on the third fret. So I know my first dot is three, next dot is five, next dot is seven, next dot is 10, and the double dot, that's usually always 12. So if I memorize my dots, I can have a little cheat sheet, so to speak, as I jump up and down the neck. And here's the other thing too. Remember that the dots are on the top of the neck as well. So while this is a very beginner comment that I'm gonna make out, because I know some beginners will jump into these songs, I wanna point out 
never ever turn the uke like this to look at the dots here. Always use the ones up top as your guide, okay? So as I'm jumping up from first position all the way to seventh position, well, I know that I jump to my third dot and that's where my index is gonna land. So that's kind of how I'm doing it. And as I move my hand up too, I'm not actually watching my hand as I move it up. Instead, I'm keeping my eye on the prize. So my prize for here is just going to be that third dot. And it's actually, we'll go one step further. If we put up the tab for this measure, measure five, we're gonna see that our first hit, our first note is gonna be the ninth fret. So really when I'm jumping up, I kind of want to keep my eye on that ninth fret. So one behind our fourth dot. So as I'm jumping up from the last part, my eye just stays locked on this ninth fret where my ring finger is going to land because I know I'm playing in the box of sev to 10. So don't follow <laughs> your left hand up the neck. Instead, keep your eye on the prize, that ninth fret right there. Okay. So looking at this fifth measure, we're gonna start with the pull off, nine to eight. We know which fingers, cause we know what position we're playing out of. So pull off, then we're gonna follow up with sev to eight, opposite, hammer on. So we have pull off, hammer, okay? Now, after this, we're going to play eight and sev on string number two. But with this measure and the following measure, I want to spend a little bit of time about talking about how to mute unwanted string noise. So what am I talking about with unwanted string noise? Well, take a listen. As I cycle through those little measures, especially right there, you can hear some just ringing out of these strings that we had just played, but are no longer playing. Now here's the thing. A lot of times we can use right hand palm muting to mute strings, to mute unwanted strings from ringing out. If you're new to that, you should check out this etude because it goes super in depth into how to mute with the right hand palm. But that doesn't really work for everything that we're playing, especially a really quick song like this with quick melody notes. So as I cycle through, I have to use my index finger to keep everything nice and clean. So what am I doing exactly as I'm working through this? Well, we know how to play this. We have nine to eight to seven to eight. We don't have to do any kind of muting stuff just yet. But when we get to the next part where we go eight to seven, if I move my fingers directly down to fingertip, you can hear that third string rings out a little bit. Like that. We want to stop that sound. So how do we stop that sound? Well, after we play the couple notes, we have to mute the third string. And the way to mute the third string is to continue to touch it with the index finger. So as I do a pull off and I do a hammer on, instead of moving directly down like we typically do for playing fretted notes so we can get on the fingertip with this nice curve, Instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pivot. So look at that first joint. You can see that it's gonna pivot straight down and I'm gonna be playing essentially like right there. So it's not on the fingertip, but it's kind of like midway between that joint and the fingertip. So I'm gonna pivot down so you can see that joint just bends down, pivot down to play the note. And essentially the same thing's gonna happen with the index finger, right? is that I'm just kind of pivoting down, but at the same time, I'm using my fingertip to touch the third string, which is doing essentially what you do when you do a muted strum, which is cutting the notes. So that's the way to eliminate unwanted string noise for anything that you play that has you literally playing on top or below each other. And what does that mean? That means what you see right here when you have to go directly down on the same fret. Or it could be the same for like going directly up and stuff and things like that. Any, any time where you're stacked on top of each other, it's kind of what I'm trying to say. Now, this is a really hard thing to get down and it's gonna take a ton of practice, but I thought it was really important as I was practicing how I wanted to teach this lesson uh, to bring it up because a lot of times I've noticed in the challenges, we run a monthly challenge 
every single month. And a lot of times when we have harder songs like this, folks go, how can I stop this unwanted string noise? It's driving me nuts and it drives me nuts too. Don't, don't get me wrong, you know, even though I practice these techniques, sometimes I don't nail it every time. And I hear that on my performance, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> so put a little bit of time into the pivoting game, I like to call it, and don't get frustrated. It takes a lot of work. Uh, the same little pivot thing is going to be applied for the next measure as well, but those are pretty much the hardest measures in this tune, and the re rest of the song you can kind of just go back to just general fingertip for picking. Okay, so let's try that measure together. So measure five, all eighth notes, here we go. Two and three and... Two and three and... And you can hear, I got a little a string noise. Let's try it again. Two and three and... Nice. As I go into the next measure, I'm gonna start with my pinky on the seventh, I'm sorry, the 10th fret of the third string. Notice my index finger though. It hasn't moved. I'm still touching to mute the string even though I don't need to mute it. And there's a reason why, because as we play this first note into the second note, which is seven, your finger's already pivoted down, holding that note out. So you might as well just leave it in position. Okay, the last note, eight on string one with the middle. Okay, so backtracking, just leave it pivoted down, anchored. It's okay if it's still muting the third string, it doesn't matter. Pinky, seven on two, middle place eight on one. Okay, that's gonna be the easiest way if you're working on the muted uh, technique that I talked about. So let's see if we can do this. Let's just try to add those three notes to the fifth bar. So we're just gonna go because it sounds like a complete phrase. So let's see if we can try that. Two and three and. Cool. And let's try one more time. Two and three and. Cool. So this note is gonna be a quarter. We're gonna rest on B3, and then we're going to play Sev on the first string to end the phrase. But let's add the next note. The next note's gonna be 10 on string two, okay? So if I cycle through this, I'm gonna play five, six into that first note of sev. Okay, so it sounds like that. So with this one, let's see if we can uh, go slow and just play that phrase. Two and three and. Nice. So that's probably the, the collection of notes and that I would play for that, that phrase for practicing. Because if we look at the end of measure seven and going into measure eight, that sounds like a complete phrase in and of itself. All right, it's kind of a cool little walk down. Da, 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 okay, so that would be a, a complete phrase that I would practice in and of itself right there. So let's learn what's happening. So looking at the end of seven, we're gonna start with our middle finger on eight. So we're still playing in that box, guys. We're still playing the seven to 10 box throughout this. Okay, so keep that in mind. So you're gonna start with the middle finger on eight on string two, then go to seven on string two, and then nine on string three. And you can see I've already reverted back to just fingertip. Okay, so nothing of the uh, crazy, uh, Olympic gymnast, the left hand technique for this part. Okay, so eight, seven, nine. But let's take a look at the next measure and let's add that phrase too. So it's gonna be eight on string three, followed by pinky playing 10 on string four. And here you can kind of revert from the piccato picking. You can use your thumb. And you can even use your thumb for string three if you want. If you wanna make it even a little bit easier, if you're newer to piccato, you can piccato pick one and two, cross strings one and two, and then maybe use your thumb for string three and four. So it's kind of a hybrid. But I tend to favor the 
the cow to picking across one, two, and three, and thumb can be used for four. <laughs> Sounds so cool. Okay, so backing track, backing, back tracking, <laughs> not a backing track. Go back to eight on string three, then 10 on string four, then we have an open E string. That's gonna buy us time to move our left hand down to the second fret of string three. So that's gonna be the index finger, open, and then end on four on string three. Sorry, string four. And you can notice already that if we're using our index finger for second and our ring finger for four, well, aren't we setting ourselves up already to go back into position two to restart the beginning of that A melody. And that would be correct, exactly what we're doing. So keep that in mind. As you move your way back here, you're reverting back to position two, okay? So again, we have, all right, let's try just that. So we have eight, 10, open, buys us time, second, open, four, on string four. Let's give that a shot. All eighths, two, and three and two, three and nice and let's add those extra three notes at the end of seven so one and two and three and one and two and three and nice so that'll cover everything that'll give you a good gist of that just that a melody the first eight bars so let's do this. Let's just backtrack. I'm going to play through everything for the entire first little melody. And remember, as you're practicing, break it into little phrases. Don't do one bar at a time, but you know, try a few bars at a time, or I highlighted exactly how to break it into phrases. You can follow that advice as well. But everything throughout sounds like this. So really cool melody, tricky though, but we've already learned that we can stay in positions to make it easier on our left hand. We know that we can do the piccato picking cross string one, two, and three, thumb for four. And we know how to navigate by using our guides, our little jumping guides. So quite a few tricks, and we even talked about how to clean up some of the playing for those tricky measures. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this to help us, to aid us in playing a little tricky tune like this. But let's go ahead and keep moving on. That gives us the first eight, first eight bars for this A melody. And what you're gonna notice is we have a ton of repetition. So we don't have much more music to learn to finish it up because we're gonna have so much of the same copy and paste. So here's what's happening. As we jump into the ninth measure, it's going to start identical to the first measure. So 9, 10, 11, and up to the last two notes of 12 are going to be the same as 1 through 4. Take a listen. So that last pull off, that's the only difference that we have. So let's go ahead and skip 9, 10, 11, because we know how to play them already. If we look at 12, you can see we start the same but we're going to be ending it with a little different uh, two note phrase. So we go one to two, pull off one to open on string two, and here's what's new. We're going to go three to one on string two. So that's gonna be our last little uh, melody note that we're gonna play. Okay, let's give that one a shot. It's all eighth notes. Two and three and one and two and three. So pretty simple stuff. Now, my favorite part is coming up next. If we look at this uh, 13th measure, it's going to start a little walk up that takes us in, uh, carries on through the 14th measure. And I played into the next measure for that first note. But you can hear and see, it's super duper cool. Now, keep in mind positions, right? We're playing position two, starting out in position sev, but then we have a bit of an extension, a bit of a stretch before we end. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But backtracking, let's look at this 13th measure. Start with the open E, 
Use the middle for the third fret on string three, back to the open E, second fret, fourth fret, open A. So we have, okay, let's see if we can try that. Two and three and. Okay, going up to seventh fret, we know how to jump up, right? Don't follow your index finger. Instead, keep your eye on the prize. Prize is seven on string two. So start with your index finger on sev, string two. We're gonna go sev, eight, 10. We know what fingers to use because it's in that position. Then drop down below, we're gonna go sev. And here's the thing, I would use the middle finger for this one. So breaking out of the box and then use your pinky for 11, okay? So you can see we have a stretch because the box now breaks our sev to 10. Instead we're going sev to 11. So we're going to kind of break out of playing in that very, very boxed in, get it, punny, position, okay? So sev, eight, 10, stay in the position. Underneath, sev, then I would use the middle finger to play nine and pinky to play 11. Okay, watch how I'm moving down to the first string too. I'm going first, second, pinky, and I'm gonna pivot down first finger just pivots down. So again, it's such a fast tune and we want to minimize string noise. So we're gonna do the pivot technique, bending at that first joint to grab seven on one and then middle pinky. Okay, let's try just that measure. All ace, two and three and one and two and three and. Okay, and let's add the next note which is going to be 12 on the first string with the pinky. So just move that pinky up. So backtrack, let's start at that seventh fret. Two and three and. Nice. And again, practice this one as a complete phrase. So you wanna start on the 13th and play to that first note of 15. Sounds cool, let's give it a shot. Two, and three, and. Nice. Now, a little tricky here, because we're going to have to do a quick jump down the neck. If we look at this 15th measure, we left off on 12. We're going to go to sixth fret, and literally just create this A minor shape up at the neck. Most of us know this staircase shape as an E minor. If we move it up the neck, eventually, so E minor, F minor, G minor, A minor, it becomes an A minor, but it's the same shape. If that blew your mind, check out the cage method. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, for example, if you're playing a C chord that we all know love, stock C major, if you're at a jam, everyone's strumming a C chord, you can be a bit different a C major chord up the neck to create a nice harmony. So instead of copying the sound and everyone's going, you can play higher for a nice little harmony. So it teaches you stuff like that. So links in the description box below if you want to learn a little bit more about the theory behind it. Uh, but backtracking, let's just talk about the jump that's happening. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So I'm starting on 12. I gotta move down to six with my index. Keep my eye on the prize. I know my dots, three, five, seven. I'm one behind my third dot. So I'm gonna go hammer, and then I'm going to take the ring finger, put it on eight, and pull off. Okay, so I have first finger, hammers on to seven with the middle. Ring goes down, pull off, eight to seven. So keep that middle finger planted, just like that. And then we're going to start with the next note, which is eight on string two, and use your pinky for nine on string three. So what box are we playing out of here? We're playing out of the six to the ninth fret, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, let's give that one a shot. Now that ninth note is the first note of the next measure, but we wanna add it to complete the phrase. So we have Let's give it a shot. Here we go. Two, three, and actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll start on 
just that phrase. So we'll start on the end of one, two, and three, and one. Nice. Now if we look at this next measure where we left off nine on string three, look at the rest of it. It's just that pickup measure again, right? Because you can see that we have a repeat sign and this is ending number one. This is gonna take us back to measure number one, where we will then play the first 15 bars to a T, as we've learned, before we jump into ending number two, which we'll get to in a sec. But let's backtrack. Let's try 15 going into 16, which sounds and looks like that. So the hard thing here is when you finish that 16th bar, which was the pinky finger, you just got to move back to position two to play that pickup bar, okay? But again, that open string buys you time to move the hand down. Okay, so let's give that a shot. So 15 to 16, here we go, two and three and. Nice. So that's gonna be everything for our A melody because again, we repeat back and we cycle through the first 15 bars. So before we talk about ending number two, I'm just gonna cycle through everything. So these 16 measures, and then we'll talk about how it repeats. But here's the first 16. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Once you finish up that 16th measure, it's just going to repeat and you're going to play the same 15 bars all the way through. So instead of me playing through all of that, let's just take it from the tail end, measure 13. And that's what our ending two going into the first hit of the B melody sounds like. We have harmonics that we're going to be playing. So if we look at this 17th measure, ending number two, it's going to basically start where we left off. So if we think about the last, second to last measure we learned, we learned that, right? Well, you're playing that to a T. Da, 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 and then you go into this ending number two, which is going to be taking your pinky finger and playing harmonics across string one, two, and three. Okay, now if you're new to how to do natural harmonics, that's what this one is called. There's two types of harmonics. There's natural and artificial, which let me get a little bit louder. Sounds like that. If you wanna learn the difference between the two and how to do the two, um, we have a full course and all the mechanic lessons that teach you how to do it are free. So I'll link that in the description box below. But I'm gonna move forward, assuming you know how to do this. Now what's hard is you have to do the pinky finger. I think that's gonna be the most efficient way. So I'm just going first, second, third with the pinky. And then I'm gonna take the index finger to play nine on string three, okay? So if you think about it, we're still playing in a box. We're playing nine to 12, right? Pinky plays 12, index plays nine. Then you're gonna play the open E. That's gonna buy you time to move your hand down to the third fret of string two. That's the first note for melody B, okay? But hang on with that thought for a second. Let's try this 17th fret. Sounds like this. We have to think about where we left off. We left off with pinky playing nine on string three because we had that, right? Then we move up, 12, 12, 12, nine, open, move down to the third fret of string two, okay? Okay. So let's see if we can try that one together. So we start on nine with our pinky, then we move up, 12, 12, 12, nine with the index, open, and then third fret of string two with the index. Okay, slow, two and three and one. Awesome, another great example. I missed that first harmonic, right? Lay through your mistakes. That's, that's the only way to get this stuff down, right? Don't 
don't get mad you know if you mess up look i'm teacher and you can clearly see that i don't play perfect every time either okay so don't beat yourself up this is a tough tough tune now this melody b this melody b is actually a lot easier to play <laughs> than the a melody i would say except for one little bar but it's pretty straightforward now what you want to practice really is going to be the transition so this ending two going into that first hit that third fret of string two because it's quite a hard whoops quite a hard jump okay but again use your guide first dot is the third fret so here's what the first bar of melody B sounds like. And I lied, I played the first two because they're identical. So if we look at measure number 18, we're going to basically have a repetitive rhythm. One, two, and three, end. Okay, so that's just gonna get repeated. So take that index finger, we know it goes on third fret of string two. Then take your middle finger, put it on five on string three, and take your pinky that's the kicker, put it on seven on string four. Now, here's the thing that's hard. You need to be on a fingertip for the index finger. So you need that A string to ring open. So when you're playing this chord that you're playing out of right here, you need to have that index finger curved, right? So look at where my thumb is. It's slightly above the middle of the neck. I've got this U-shaped gap right here, right? So I'm not hugging the neck. I got that little U-shaped gap and I'm on fingertip curved like that. That's gonna allow the A string to ring out because as we play through it, and you can see you have two, three, one, four, three. That's your picking pattern. Two, three, one, four, three, but you need proper form. So if you need a recap on proper left hand form, I'll link it in the description box below. It talks all about that U-shaped gap, thumb placement in the uh, slightly above the middle of the neck. All that stuff is beneficial, not only to basic chords or bar chords, but also very hard stretch chords. Okay? So with this one, let's see if we can try it together. So we have three, five, oh, seven, five. Here we go. Two, three. Again. Okay, so we played it four times, but in the context of the music, you're only going to play it two times. Okay, so for 18 and 19, let's try it twice. One, two, and three. Good. At this point, looking into measure 20, get rid of the pinky. We don't need it anymore. We're going to start with the first note the same. So third onto the second string. Move the middle finger down to four. So go down a half step. Play that. Then open A. Then take the ring. Play to push it on five or place it on five on string four. And then back to the fourth fret of string three. So your picking pattern is the same, guys, right? Second, three, one, four, three. But you're playing out of a different shape now. So you just want to work on the transition. Here's the thing, one time. Measure 20 only plays that one time, okay? So your transition, three, five, seven, goes to three, four, five, but here's the thing, watch the ring finger. It only gets added at the end, so you don't need to go full on into this staircase shape on beat one. You don't have to do that. You're adding a finger at the time the music calls for it. So don't feel like you gotta rush right into that chord shape on B1. You don't have to do that. So again, we have two, three, one, four, three. So that's pretty simple. Let's backtrack. Let's try 18, 19, 20, okay? Work on that transition. One, two, and three, and. Okay, hit pause on this video. It's a little tricky. Just get uh, comfortable with that and then we'll carry on for the next measure. Now the next measure is the one that I was saying was kind of hard. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. And it's tricky. No beating around the bush on this one. Here's the thing, you left off with, okay? 
Your index finger is already in place to play the first note, three, but we can lift up these top two notes, right? We don't need them anymore. So play three on string two, stretch with your pinky, sev to three. So remember that pivot action we talked, right? Gotta employ that right here. Okay, so instead of moving the finger all the way down on fingertip, you can just pivot down like that. So we have three pivs down to sev, pull off to three. Okay, you know what that sounds like? NBC. <laughs> Put a little humor in the middle of our lesson. But anyways, backtrack. Three, sev, three. Okay, so three, pull off to three. Here's the hard part. Slide sev to 10 with the pinky. Pull off with the index finger to the seventh fret. And then end on eight on string two. So slide. Pull off to sev, eight on two. Put it together, one and two and three and. So you gotta keep that steady going throughout. Let's give it a shot. Two and three and one, two and three and. Okay, that one's hard, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that's one that you really, really gotta put in the time for. You know, so we have this crazy little stretch in the beginning, but this little pull off and slides and technique filled like tricky, tricky stuff right there. Now, good thing is that as we go to the next part, it's actually easy to play, but the transition going into it is tricky. <laughs> as you can see, you're doing that crazy pull offs and slides and stuff. And then you gotta go into this partial bar. So partial bar means we're covering three strings or two strings. It's not four strings. Full bar is all four strings. Partial bar. This one we know, it's an E7. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the index, we're gonna lay it flat across strings one, two, and three on the fourth fret. Take your middle, put it on five on string one. Okay, so here's the thing. After you do that, you've got to quickly jump and navigate to that fifth fret of string one with the middle. Okay, so you're gonna play that note, and at that, after that note, you're going to bar across with the index. Okay, so you can see, I get to that note, then I worry about the bar, not try to make the chord on beat one. Okay, so when we play five, it's gonna be a quarter note, so same rhythm, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and that's what we're playing, but we have a stretch again. So five, then play four on string two, then take the pinky stretch to eight on string one, then four on string three, and four on string two. Try to keep that finger held down so those notes are ringing out, and I need a break because my fingers are tired. <laughs> so don't feel like, oh, this, this is tough. It's tough for me as well, okay? So keep that finger held down so the chord rings out throughout. Let's see if we can try that measure together. So one, two, and three, and here we go. Two, three. Good, at this point, move the pinky down to sev. So you're gonna play that note. It's a little bit of finger frenzy. So if you take a look at the tap, we can see we start with sev on string one, then we're gonna play string two. Keep it held down up to that third note. Lift up, so you can play five. So the middle finger stays anchored, right? Okay, but we wanna keep pinky down till we get there, so we can keep sustain going. Okay, so sev, four, five, four, four. Okay, so you probably just wanna hit pause and practice that. First, second, first, third, second. Key thing here, finger frenzy, pinky, up, okay? So work on that, that's the hard part. Let's try that bar together. Two, three, one, two, and three, and nice. And then as we go into the ending home run stretch, it's going to be a little cool arpeggio. Okay, well let's break down what's happening here. So we're gonna start playing it just out of this little A minor shape, okay? It's probably a shape that most of us know. If not, let's cover the chord real quick. So middle finger plays four on string three, ring is five on two, and index is three on one. 
Okay, so we're going to start with an open A, open C, then start making the chord. Middle, ring, index. Okay? At this point, pinky goes to sev. And honestly, I would probably lift each finger up after I play it. I don't think I'd sustain this chord. Right? I think I'd make it easier on myself and just do one at a time. Okay? So pinky goes on sev. You're going to play that note and slide up to 12. Now here's the thing. If you're playing this fast, you can slide up and just lift pressure up. So eventually, I'm lifting pressure up and just letting go. So I'm letting go probably somewhere around 10 or 11. So it's essentially creating kind of a fade out. And if the A string rings open, that's fine because it's the same note as the 12th fret. Okay? And as you can hear in the end, we're going to go back and play that little pickup again. Now, let's take a second to backtrack and let's just try just that. So here we go. Two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and... Okay? So a really, really cool way to end this. Now, let's hit pause, and let's look at B, melody B as a whole. If I cycle through everything, I've got... Back into melody A. Tricky stuff. So with this one, I would take it and break it down into a couple bars at a time. Then work on the transition. Right, so you may want to take just those four bars at a time and just master that. Right, work on the transition, tricky. Right, so breaking this one in half, just tackling little phrases and sections, that's going to be the best way to get it down. But I think uh, this is one that's just going to take time, so I don't think it's one that we'll try together in this video. But just practice it. Go slow. Don't worry about playing it fast. I know that I played it really fast in the performance. But don't worry, this song sounds really cool at a slower tempo as well. Now, here's the thing. After this, you're going back into the A melody, okay? And we're going to just play eight bars of the A melody. What do you notice? As I played the A melody, I didn't play bars 1 through 8. I played instead 9 through 16 with a little variation at the end. So as you go back into the A melody, you're just going to end the tune. So... Remember that change? So there's our little ending variation. So if we kick back to the last couple bars, we have, right? Instead of going to nine on string three, I want you to move the pinky up to 12 and play the harmonic on strings one and two. So that's the, that's the only change. Okay, so very simple, let's try that. This is measure 32 into 33, two and three. And that's going to end the tune. So I made a shorter uh, form for this tune. And again, I'm going to explain if you want to play it exactly as it was composed and written. I'll explain that in the description box below. So you, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just read that. Or if you're on the sites in the helpful tips above this video. But that's going to be everything for this lesson, guys. So we've learned the entire A melody and B melody. We know the form A, A, B, A. Okay? So this song, I gotta say, it's such a cool sounding melody. It's a great one for working on building speed, navigating the fretboard up and down the neck, 
and it's just it's fun there's a backing track that you guys can download uh, for this lesson if you're a premium member and you can play along uh, with the uh, baritone part so if you only want to learn the melody that's cool you can play along with that backing track i'm going to upload it at 75 percent speed too so if you want to practice slower i may upload it at 50 percent we'll see how that sounds um if it's things are too slow, I usually stick with 75% and 100% for the backing tracks, but we'll take a listen to how that comes out. And yeah, all, all that stuff will be on, uh, can be found by clicking this link, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com. You can do a search for the song's name. And don't forget too, the tabs are there. You can print that off, keep for your records, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play. You can watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down. Just a great practice for a tricky tune like this. So guys, I'll see you in the part two lesson. We're gonna learn the baritone part. It's super fun to play. There's a lot of movement in that one as well. And you know, usually when you, you see duets, the rhythm's kind of, not the most exciting thing to play. Not the case with this. The rhythm is super fun. So if you've got a baritone, I'll see you in the part two lesson. Take care.